We'll now move to the second panel discussion for the day, Driving Social Change, Corporate Strategies for Innovation and Impact. This session will explore how corporates can integrate social innovation into their business strategy to drive meaningful impact. For this session, we have Mr. Pratik Garg, moderator. He's a chairman of CII Northern Region National Startup Subcommittee and founder and CEO of Progress of Infotech, who has been instrumental in supporting startup ecosystem and fostering innovation. Joining him are esteemed panelists, Ms. Nemesisa Ujjain, VP and head at Hunt Circle Private Limited, an expert in leveraging innovation for strategies business growth. We have Ms. Anupam Nidhi, head of CSR at Vedanta Group, who leads impactful corporate social responsible initiatives. We also have Mr. Shaumik Gug, Head of Development at Janagraha, focusing on sustainability development and urban governance. Please join me in welcoming our members. Over to you, Mr. Gar. Very good afternoon, to ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for joining this section. And, uh, my name is uh, Pratik Gar. Uh, I'm the regional North Region Chair for the Startup and Entrepreneurship Subcommittee. As introduced, uh, I also been an entrepreneur uh, uh, running a tech services company for the last 35 years. Uh, so, so it's it's um, it's both a pleasure and honor to be moderating this uh, very interesting session. Um, and, uh, we heard uh, uh, Suchitraji in the morning uh, giving us a story about her journey as a social impact entrepreneur and what what huge impact has, uh, she created on uh, on humanity, if I may say so. All right. I have a very interesting, uh, in this session, uh, what we're trying to really, uh, I'm going to try and bring out uh, is how companies are in, in uh, you know increasingly integrating social responsibility into their core missions witnessing a significant shift from the traditional pure csr models to a more dynamic impact driven strategy intersecting profit with purpose organizations are now adopting business models that seamlessly integrate social impact into their value propositions leading not only to creation of newer markets, but also to transform the existing ones. For instance, the rise of renewable energy has not only addressed environmental issues, but also opened up entirely new industries and revenue streams for businesses. So, so this is in, in this increasingly value-driven market, consumers are seeking out brands that align with their ethical, align their ethical standards and contribute to social causes. So with this as the context, uh, uh, I'm delighted to welcome the panel, uh, a very august panel. Uh, on my right is uh, Nemesisa Ujain. She is the vice president and head of Circle FC, uh, uh, which is an accelerator. And uh, on my left, we have uh, Ms. Anupam Nidhi. She is the head of CSR for the Vedanta Group. And, uh, and next to her is uh, Shomik uh, uh, Guha, who's uh, the head of uh, development for Janagraha. Uh, so that uh, so let me uh, begin by asking <clears throat> each of the esteemed panelists that. Are here to 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 share uh, you know how your organizations are fostering social innovation within your areas of expertise. So it'll be good if you could uh, each one of you could reflect and maybe uh, Mrs. Savi could start with you. 
Sure, Pratik. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, CII, for organizing this amazing event. I mean, uh, this new fish initiative, I'm sure this is the need of the art. And uh, it's a great start to something that I'm sure will become uh, a, a support to all the startups who are working in the social sector in India. Introducing myself, I'm Nemesisa, uh, and I go by Nemo, which is easier to <laughs> pronounce. I work with a family office called Hunch Ventures. I um, manage deal flow for them. And I also uh, run uh, an accelerator program called the Circle Founders Club, uh, the Circle FC, in short. Uh, we have uh, uh, been active since 2021 uh, uh, and have run eight cohorts uh, to accelerate startups. One of the key USPs we have is that we help startups go global and think global from day one. Uh, and we have run uh, many cross-border programs. We uh, support soft landing programs for international startups coming to India. Regarding the topic of social uh, tech, social entrepreneurship, I would like to give three perspectives. One is from the uh, family office, a fund perspective, which is Hunch Ventures. So Hunch as a fund has been investing in um, different uh, sectors since the last 10 plus years. But Recently, the thesis has moved to uh, food security uh, and sustainability, including climate tech. We have been an investor in blue smart mobility. Uh, we also have been focusing on urban air mobility and moving towards electric VTOLs, wherein uh, you have uh, drones which can carry humans or air taxis. And we are actively working to bring this in India. We've also been investing in health tech and uh, we are uh, uh, setting up some of the first uh, uh, net zero uh, carbon emission food parks in India. From the uh, accelerator point of view, we have run a program called the Water Challenge where we supported 10 water tech startups who were uh, creating uh, 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 new innovations to help solve the biggest problem, one of the biggest challenges in India, which is uh, related to water. And uh, uh, many, many uh, areas, including urban and rural, they face such issues that, that need innovative solutions. So we, we, we ran that program last year. We also supported those startups to showcase their solutions, and not just in India, but outside India. And we we got took them to uh, Japan and we got them to showcase it in front of 10 plus countries of what the work that they are doing. So helping them get that exposure and uh, a global sort of uh, branding is what we try to do. Apart from this, we also work with international organizations like Korea Social Innovation Fund, wherein we have international uh, startups who are solving for India's problems. So we help them. Uh, 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 access the Indian market and uh, solve problems along with local partners. And lastly, I would mention the community angle wherein we have co-working spaces and we work with uh, uh, not-for-profit startups uh, like the Kind Citizen to run uh, campaigns like uh, recently we did the Wishing uh, Tree. So we have 70 companies working out of the same uh, setup, same space, and we had a tree wherein the wishes from children from an orphanage were mentioned. And anybody can pick up one of those wishes and actually get them a gift based on, uh, uh, based on their uh, suitability. And then the kids came to the space and they had an interactive session. So these are the things that we are doing from a fund, an accelerator, and a community uh, perspective. Yeah, no. yeah, please. A very good morning to all of you. Rather good afternoon. Um, it always looks like it's morning when you're, you're in Delhi. Um, I come in from Udaipur, uh, which is in Rajasthan, the city of lakes. Um, and that's where my work is. Um, but uh, pleasure being here with all of you today. Um, I bring in a different perspective. Okay, I, I come in from Vedanta. Vedanta, I, I'm sure you, all of you are aware of. Um, wherein I would say we are the ones who are uh, adopters of some of what you start with or the ideas that you bring on. 
um, both with the perspective of bringing a complete differentiation in what we do uh, and, and being ahead of the curve, whether that's the newly coined term of ESG or the larger sustainability. Um, but it's been very interesting journey that we have as uh, various subsidiaries of Vedanta, whether that's Hindustan Zinc, which is into the zinc and uh, silver mining space, or whether that's the uh, aluminum sector or the oil and gas, we have been able to bring on some very interesting technologies which uh, startups have actually uh, been able to realize on ground, both in the perspective of uh, where they already have an idea or where we work with them to uh, work on enhancing that incremental inno innovation that they are doing to apply into our ecosystem and uh, majorly also technology driven. And it's very interesting to see how in some of these spheres, whether that's on environment side, uh, whether where we are looking at our tailing dams and uh, the vegetative uh, growth density that we'd like to measure, how we are using our startups there or for that matter, kind of looking at uh, the water bodies that we, uh, kind of fresh water bodies that we have for our measuring ecosystem we have been inviting startups and we already have a couple of successful models up there. Uh, from from the safety angle, again, um, it's, it's interesting to see how some of the AIs as well as the Gen, Gen AI as well as other technologies are being picked up for man-machine interaction. So we're pretty technical on that aspect, but yes, these are startups which are coming in and supporting us. So we have a complete program called Spark, which we have been running for the last three years and we invite various startups to come on board bring their ideas and then we find how we could either apply them in our existing scenarios where we have our uh, so-called defined areas of opportunities of growth or improvement or else we work with them to see if there's some meaningful ecosystem that we can curate along with them and uh, that's one part of it. The other part of it is our within our larger CSR space because I believe my CSR domain is also a startup. Uh, when I say so, and I am saying it very, uh, very consciously out here, uh, is, is the very fact that uh, we are working with our uh, communities, our sakis, or our women and uh, rural rural women or farmers, and working along with them, not just for the food security part of it, but beyond that, to bring their collective ideas and create a startup of their own, and probably reaching out to some of those. Uh, other set of initiatives like IAMs and others to help them groom that particular startup into a fully fledged uh, business on, unto itself. Initial support from CSR, but the focus is completely business like. So I have at, at my end around 14 such startups which are running, which are owned by the community members, by our Sakhis or our farmers under various institutions that, we have, that they have registered under their own names. They have their own brands, uh, they have their own marketing entity called Heart with Fingers. Uh, so that's another ecosystem that we are creating within the larger ecosystem of what is the grassroots touch point. Um, happy to share more as we go along. Thank you. Wonderful. CSR as a community startup. That's wonderful. So, uh, so Shomik, uh, what you? Uh, if you could, uh, I understand you do a lot of work in um, urban governments and civic management, and a lot of it is consulting, perhaps. So could bring in a perspective of what you think is right. Thanks. Thanks, Pratik. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as just Pratik just mentioned, I represent an organization called Janagraha. So um, surprise, surprise, I'm the oddball out of this August panel. Um, we're a not-for-profit and we work on place-based development uh, specifically focused on urban systems. And we're a systems change organization. Now, uh, when Anupam and Nemesisa were talking about introductions from their perspective as to what their organizations do, um, I was just wondering as to how do I place this in context to the audience which I have. Uh, now, what we do uh, typically is we're the sort of the bridge between the government because we work as a not-for-profit exclusively on urban policy, urban governance reforms, as well as uh, bringing the prominence of place-based development. Now, uh, some of you may sort of question the fact that where does startups come into the play in this 
uh, what I'm saying. But uh, from what we do is essentially we work with government to provide better infrastructure and services to citizens as uh, citizens of cities. And as we know, uh, cities and towns are growth engines, are economic growth engines. What we want or what we believe in is to improve the overall quality of life for citizens at large. Now, that's a sort of a, a, a complex uh, definition in itself, but it essentially comprises of the whole of healthcare outcomes, educational outcomes, uh, better living conditions, uh, affordable housing, uh, cleaner air, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, non-motorized mobility, uh, planning and design of cities in a better manner so that you have better air to breathe, more sort of recreation places to go to, uh, better designed cities. So essentially what we do as an organization is help the government as a advisory agency as well as uh, working with the government to improve civic systems in cities uh, and gaining local prominence and local sort of governments to get more and more uh, capacitated with resources, money, better utilization of finances. And last but not the least, as the uh, sort of the organization goes by its name Janagra, we also believe in working on uh, sort of creating a platform of participatory governance so that essentially it's our money which goes into the tax uh, kitty, overall divisible tax kitty, which uh, essentially sort of plans out to sort of infrastructure and services. So we be the bridge between citizens, ordinary citizens and government and working uh, in tandem and working in a collaboration with both sets both from the supply side as well as the uh, sort of the demand side. Um, now, just to get to the point in terms of social start, uh, social tech startups, uh, it's the problem statement you design. Uh, cities today don't have enough data. Uh, you can look at possibly data being an enabler for decision making. Um, and that in itself uh, is an opportunity in our view as to how, what can be addressed within the uh, larger sort of scheme of things. So um, I'll end this and uh, uh, more as we go along. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Shomik. Uh, so just, just picking up from what you said and also looking at the body of work you've done over the last over two decades uh, from working with for-profit organizations to now working with a non-profit uh, organization. Uh, how do you see the change, you know, uh, in perspectives and how is it in fact, how is it in fact now? So, uh, yeah, so good point. Uh, so when I started my career, I was a, I mean, for majority portion of my professional career, it's been about uh, an ROI, ROCE, IRR and all of those. Uh, having been in roles of uh, for-profit, and essentially about PNL, uh, but uh, what's been extremely encouraging is over the last, I would say, the last six to eight years, where the entire ecosystem and and credit to uh, and, and uh, credit to everyone who's part of the ecosystem, including people who are thinking about social impact as a viable um, opportunity. To get addressed right so uh, whether it be in health tech agri tech education uh, environment tech uh, but but you know i've seen a sea of sea change and all positive i must add on the kind of just the sheer volume sheer number of people who are looking at this space uh, and the maturity of the sector itself on having the patience of being in it for the long game, so to speak. Um, so I think Suchitra ji mentioned back when they started, uh, there was practically nothing. And here we are uh, part of a sort of an event which is fostering uh, an, an initiative for social change. So that just tells you the sort of the, 
change which has been brought about in the thought process of the overall sort of ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I must confess uh, that uh, since morning, uh, listening to different speakers, uh, yeah, it's been a wonderful learning experience uh, for me personally, because I've not really been tuned into the kind of social tech work that is happening uh, uh, and the scale at which it is happening. So, uh, so wonderful. So moving to you, uh, Anupam, uh, you've been uh, uh, CSR, CSR all through your career. Is that, uh, that's right. So, uh, so from, uh, you know, previous companies like Siemens and Reliance and then now uh, to the Vedanta group, uh, how, how do you how do you see this uh, journey evolving for you? How things, uh, perspectives have changed, how priorities have changed, uh, if you could just delve on them because you're the only CSR on the panel. So I, mean, I thought, uh, let's go a little deeper uh, and listen in. Thank you. Thank you so much for that question. Um, coincidentally, I also happened to be, I, I was an HR head for an IT company and then uh, something, some bug bit me and then and here I am and I'm glad that I, I'm here. Um, so it's been like, as you rightly said, majority of my experience has been in the CSR space and I've learned it hard way. Uh, not a professional by education, but a profession by experience uh, into the space. Um, it's been interesting to see how CSR has evolved, and I would kind of correlate it with how the larger ecosystem is also evolving and the understanding about it as well. Um, pretty much uh, earlier, it was a domain that was thought of as a development sector. With the opening up of uh, the company VAC coming into play, the real role of CS, uh, the corporates were also seen in the larger social development part of it, and hence there was a need for co-creation and coming together. Eventually, over the last 10 years, ever since the act came into place, which is 2013-14, uh, over those 10 years, the NGOs have corporatized a lot. And the corporates have also getting into that space of engineizing themselves in terms of understanding where this whole social development comes into play. And it is not one day's affair. And somebody was saying in the earlier panel whether it's a, uh, it's a KPI or KSI, uh, but it's technically as in that those uh, lines are diminishing and the understandings are far higher for them to understand that you need to really invest your time. You cannot expect a turnaround in one year or flat two years. Uh, and you really need to establish a very strong matrices on the other side, which the development sector understands and re reporting the documentation, the positioning of it. But and, and and of course that's the reason why we are getting into social stock exchanges. So that's the that's the complete lineage of journey that we have seen in terms of the maturity of thought, the ability to understand each other's position and the need to change and need to evolve and come together for the larger good. Um, I think that's pretty eminent up there. Uh, recently, if you see the union budget 2024, it seems like a complete CSR segment, as in focusing on women, focusing on agriculture, skill development. It poor. Uh, and then it, it seems like, yes, those are the areas one needs to work towards and it cannot be done without a corporate or some development sector coming in together, but it does need a thinking mind and this thinking mind is the sector, the startup sector, which is bringing in, which is breaking uh, and is being disruptive out there, which is bringing in the norms and you know, willing to experiment is flexible enough, uh, nimble as we say, to kind of adapt to the changing scenarios. I think that's that's where we need a complete partnership up there between all three. And, and that's where I see we moving, progressing further in the next five years. This is the space that will definitely grow. And I do see a very strong role of startups. And I really appreciate it. And that's why in our CSR ecosystem, we have our, the role of startups as well. We reach out to our startups and we are willing to experiment and put the money on the table to experiment together and to kind of innovate for a social change and move together. So, thank you. Thank, thank you. Yeah, just just to make sure that we are running on time and uh, towards the end of this, uh, we will open it up for the audience to ask them questions so you could think about it in the meanwhile. So moving to you, uh, Nemesis, uh, you mentioned you uh, in your hunch ventures and investments, you focus on 
deals and flows. So, so is there any uh, any theme that you follow there? Is it uh, 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 for the potential startups that you look at? And what has been the experience? Uh, is it social uh, impact funding or is it uh, general commercial, any commercial venture that you? Sure. So I would like to mention one thing before I answer this question, if that's okay. Um, you know, I've been in the startup ecosystem since the last uh, 12 years. So out of my 15 plus years of experience, 10 years I've been in the ecosystem. Uh, I was, uh, you know, in my first, in my second startup when Flipkart became a unicorn. So I've seen the the entire journey of how the ecosystem has developed and evolved. And in one of the earliest uh, conferences I attended, there was one uh, uh, very prominent VC who mentioned one thing. And I'm talking that like this happened about seven, eight years back. He said that in the U.S., uh, you send them. So there is a company, there's a startup which has designed this new solution you send a message and the message disappears you know which company is that which app is that snapchat right so snapchat now that is a billion dollar company in the us and uh, that's a that's that's something which talk tells about that market but when you are in india you are actually stepping out of your home and you are reaching your office there are so many problems that we see the roads are not uh, uh, developed well. There are, uh, uh, you know, so many water logging issues while coming here from uh, Gurgaon, Delhi. You would have seen all of that. So in India, still, there's so many problems that need solving. And that would only get solved when there is something that, and th when there are people solving it and there are funds we see supporting them and they will only support because end of the day there has to be some sort of a profit that we will make because we are not the government end of the day we also have to uh, you know uh, uh, rationalize everything that we are doing to our stakeholders to our shareholders so having said that um, uh, the family office that i represent hunch ventures um, they have been into multiple businesses since the last 50 years and last 10 years when we started investing in new age companies uh, there were multiple different kind of investments health was one of the key areas uh, sas was another and lifestyle all of that was there but in the last couple of years especially post pandemic the realization came that in india where 1 billion people are still living on government support the things that we need to we need to fund are the things that will make india have a better future a more livable future and one of the things that we had in mind was food security you know we are very proud that india is the 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 has the largest population youngest population but that also is you know creating new problems we need food for everybody and as people are getting more upwardly mobile you know one of the key things that happen the protein consumption goes higher and animal protein is one of the most polluting industries in the world so we want to uh, invest in as a thesis which we have adopted recently we want to invest in food security uh, plant proteins uh, proteins where carbon emission is lesser and that is where the food parks that i mentioned second is this is also relating to climate tech so urban air mobility you know our roads are all congested there's so much pollution in delhi after october it will be unlivable again for the next two three months because of the pollution so evitols is another area where we, we want to invest in and we've already uh, 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 got hunch mobility uh, through which we are uh, getting uh, air taxis of the future as part of our thesis. Uh, we have already signed LOIs with largest companies of the world. Uh, uh, one of the companies is Eve Mobility uh, from Brazil, uh, where we will get those uh, uh, Evitols in India to 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 solve this problem. The third thing, again, I will mention is health tech. Health tech because uh, the 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 grassroots situation in health is still not great and even as an accelerator uh, that is something that we have been uh, working on we have been supporting startups in health tech uh, uh, and we have been supporting startups in water tech two of the startups that i would really want to mention uh, uh, is one is called water lab and the other is called um, 
Five Farm. So Five Farm is one startup again. They are creating agricultural solutions and they are growing across Asia. We have been supporting them. They are raising their new round. We we are evaluating that as well. And another the, the water lab is create has created water ATMs wherein you know access to clean drinking water is still something that is not easily available in many of our uh, rural areas. So they are providing these. Uh, uh, water ATMs, which are not run on any, which are run on solar power. So there's no other uh, uh, polluting electricity being used. And we are supporting those kind of companies to grow not only in India, but also in India. Thank you. Uh, that was very interesting. Uh, so, so moving to the last part of the uh, discussion today, uh, I'd request uh, each one of you to uh, to share with the audience, and since uh, there are uh, entrepreneurs and uh, people with deep interest in social innovation, uh, if you could share some of the key lessons uh, that you've learned over these years, either investing or uh, through the CSR initiatives or uh, you know in the urban uh, challenges uh, that Shomik is uh, in Janagra Public Health. Uh, what are the key lessons uh, that you, you've learned that you think uh, uh, will benefit the audience here? And at least one, one uh, uh, anecdotal evidence of uh, something that you're very proud of, uh, that you, the impact that you would have created. Just one such success story, uh, either in investing or otherwise. Uh, that okay. Would, uh, I'll go first so that get, I get absolved of the tougher Sort of, and I have no rapid fires. So no, no. So I'll go first, <laughs> since I'm I represent a not for profit. So I'll go first. So, so um, um, yeah. So I'll I'll start by your, the last latter part of your question. Uh, in terms of something which we, as an organization, I, uh, we are proud of. So, um, so since I just mentioned, we work exclusively with the government and. Uh, at a meta level, at the union level, uh, including bodies like the Finance Commission, the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, Niti Aayog, and at a more sort of a state, because essentially we're a federal uh, system. We work with states, various states: Assam, UP, Odisha. Uh, what we've been put together, uh, we've been able to put together is, um, if folks for folks who are uh, aware of what the Finance Commission is all about. Um, we work with the 15th round of finance commissions in which seven of our 10 recommendations were adopted by the finance commission, which equated to almost 1,20,000 crores of capital being allocated for urban development. Now, that in itself, uh, I know Nemesis, I was talking about water ATMs in the rural sector, but just to give you some stats, over the next 10, uh, well, we're in 2024, and about 25 years from now, we will have 500 million people, more than 500 million people in cities in India. Now, that is a sizable population, right? Um, so when you think about problems, when you think about impact, think about your ba own backyard, right? So, um, yeah, so that's just one anecdote. I could talk about a few others. We have something called cityfinance.in for you know, folks who are interested in numbers, uh, this is a public platform which uh, essentially puts together, um, uh, you know, sort of financial statements of urban local bodies. Uh, and it's been adopted by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. You have now for the first time access to more than about 4,000 ULBs who have put up their financial statements on a publicly available platform essentially talking about where the rupee is getting deployed. Um, think about that as an opportunity uh, in terms of better infra, better services. I know Nemesis again talked about it. So there is plenty, and I I, I just sort of overheard the previous pa panel talking about scale. In India, we have more than enough scale, right? So <laughs> the scale is not an issue at all. It's just we need to work uh, with the ecosystem, um, 
and I speak very consciously saying that IRR is a consideration having been in roles of IRR myself. Uh, but uh, please look at it from a shared value perspective where uh, one can really bring in uh, smiles to the investors as well as to the community. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, you've said it beautifully. Scale is not an issue here. Friction is the issue. You know, how do you? <laughs> All right. So over to you, uh, uh, if you could also delve into this, share your success story and uh, the learnings uh, in particular, uh, you know, uh, on the path that you are on. Thank you. Um, so maybe I'll also follow the same trend. I'll talk about what I'm really happy about. I won't say proud, but I'm really happy about and I really want to grow on that is around 12.5% uh, of our uh, partner for, uh, who implement the program on ground, when I specifically talk about CSR, they are from the startup ecosystem. And and the commitment is to grow that uh, inch by inch, year by year. Now, the only reason is because we believe kind of the nimbleness that we have, they too also have. And, and that's the real way to grow, as in you need to, uh, as they say, uh, you know, think global, act local. I think uh, this is the best way that I can within my CSR seg the segment act local to create those and bring those minds onto our platform. Uh, and, and a very interesting example, uh, you were mentioning about the uh, the whole emission element and animal uh, and the protein part of it. Um, so it, it's pretty interesting. And then we set up the Center of Excellence in uh, Udaipur, uh, Rajasthan. And uh, this is this is the complete uh, startup ecosystem. We have, as of now, three startups already there. Uh, so this uh, center of excellence basically talks about how we could reduce the emissions for a small farmer who has 10 to 15 uh, animals within, how to increase their livelihood ecosystem as well alongside. And we have an artificial insemination AI already in place. We have something called Haridhara, which is, uh, you know, it is a scientifically proven space. We are expanding that. The multiple such initiators which are being experimented there and showcased as a lab to our farmers across Rajasthan and beyond as, as in how we get support of bringing those farmers into our ecosystem and making them see how it, a little investment can actually make a huge difference to what they do in their own supply chain as well as in their own operations and ultimately the uh, data income capabilities being enhanced. Uh, there are multiple such examples that I can continue to speak on. As in our startup ecosystem, which the uh, women and the farmers led on ground last year, which was the third year for them, uh, had around six and a half crores of revenue generated. On and and that and talking about, as you rightly said, scale is not the challenge at all, but speed is. As in how fast we can move. So that's my learning how to move faster on these some of these decisions. Of course, the mindset change. A lot of inertia is there within us as well. Uh, but ultimately, I will say coming together and co-creating because without that, uh, it, it won't be possible. And the last piece I would talk about is uh, sensitivity to the situation, to the scenario, and to the other side. Um, that's also very important as a partner entity on the other side of the table as well. Yeah, that's from my side. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great uh, perspective. And six and a half crores of revenue generation is not small enough in the segment that is so it's it's happening yeah so so what you and so what is what what drives you you know what what is the success that you've seen and you know also some of the challenges that you see in this space sure so um from a fun perspective uh because we are a family office not a typical vc uh, one of the um, advantages we have, we do not have to look at exit timelines as a typical VC looks at. So uh, we have been invested in uh, some of the startups uh, uh, from the drawing board stage. And now that they're, they're raising their Series B and we are still there because we believe in what the startup is doing. So one of the examples I'd like to give is my healthcare, which is a uh, 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 company based in Gurgaon and they have uh, the largest uh, database of hospitals or uh, they have the most number of uh, 
hospital chains associated with them. And they started with the patient management system. They launched their B2C model. And now uh, they are also doing a lot around AI and the data that they have and that they will be uh, uh, talking about publicly soon. So we are very excited to be part of those journeys. And uh, one good thing or rather a peculiar thing of our times is that any company which is doing anything, they have to evolve very fast and they have to use tech. So whether it is social or any other um, uh, uh, sector that the startup is in, if you are not utilizing the technology, that, that evolution will not happen. Uh, we have to look at companies as businesses end of the day uh, and we have to believe in what they are doing but uh, we also have to see what is the revenue potential one of the examples that we saw of a startup succeeding which was an, an uh, a korean company and uh, they wanted they wanted to work in the rural areas of india wherein you know a, a very small issue is long-term blindness, macular degeneration, glaucoma. These are the things that, you know, people in resource uh, constrained areas, as we like, we, we can call, they face and uh, there isn't anything that is being done about it. They, they have developed something which is an AI and they're using upcycled Samsung phones to take a picture of their retina and then predict what is the probability of this uh, person getting uh, uh, blindness or macular degeneration related other conditions and today they are working with more than 17 hospitals including Arvind Eye Care, um, including um, uh, uh, many hospitals chains across India and they have treated more than 20,000 patients and they have they they want to work in India and they want to work with partners so when we see such examples of people coming and using technology and solving India's problems that gives us an imperative that we want to support more such companies and uh, the best thing is as as uh, Shamik was saying scale is not an issue today India is a land of opportunities we are being lauded across the world for the kind of uh, technological advancements we are making and if any company solving a real problem uses technology the the probability of them succeeding, finding funds, including the Startup India Seed Fund, like 10, 20, 50 lakhs is not a problem today if you have a good idea and you go to a Startup India Seed Funding uh, uh, institution. And then we, as strategic partners like us, can come in. Then you can go for the, the next rounds with a, a VC or uh, Indian VC. International VCs are looking to come to India. So much interest. I'm... I'm seeing because as a, I'm also a co-founder of something called Asia Bridge, which is a coalition of 10 Asian countries. And we facilitate uh, startups from our countries to go uh, find opportunities in the different Asian ecosystems. And so, so much uh, enthusiasm is there for them to uh, work with Indian startups, fund Indian startups, find the right Indian startups. It takes time, but all these countries I can mention to you like, Japan, Korea, Singapore, they are looking at Indian innovation in a, uh, in a very optimistic manner. Thank you. Uh, and this is a wonderful, uh, I think, uh, in the audience, if you're looking for, you are in the social tech uh, entrepreneurship space, uh, and you're looking for patient capital, then please catch hold of Nemesis. Uh, she's, uh, she's here, and otherwise you can certainly find a way to reach her. Uh, so with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, I'm at the end of uh, the panel discussion, but uh, we're opening it up for any questions. Uh, please raise your hand and I'm happy to take some questions for the panel. Hmm. So there are no questions. Yeah back to back and uh, we are on the lunch so i guess uh, we are on time uh, for this panel thank you very very much for being such a wonderful audience and for patient listening i hope uh, you all have some takeaways from this discussion and also from the previous panel discussions and presentations that we had thank you very much thank you Prati.
Thank you, panelists, for sharing those valuable insights. I request you for a group photograph.